What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block's strongest man, and I have an exceptionally special guest for you tonight. I consider him a mentor and the godfather of interviewing and strongman knowledge, Big Laws, Lauren Chalet. What's up, Laws? Thanks for joining me this evening. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Ciao, homie. I feel we are the page to come to for strongman news and interviews. My, my block strongest man is, is close. As we were talking about off camera a bit, I feel like you've done such a service for the strongman community in terms of all of the great interviews you've done and the historical knowledge and all that. And I just felt like we need to give back. We need to talk about your career and shine <laughs> a light on you and, and give you back some, uh, some good positivity for all the great work you've done. Ah, thank you, man. Yeah, I've, I've been doing this sport a long time now, so um, I'll probably take up all your time talking about it. But I, I love Strongman, as, as you know, and it's been so great talking to so many of not just the up and coming guys, but some of the the guys that kind of laid the path for, for the guys today. It's been really cool to to get their perspective of the sport and how things have changed and, and that side of things. So yeah, it's, it's been really good. I've enjoyed it. Good. So, uh, I, I mean, if you've seen some of my videos, I kind of consider the most important part of the interview giving you a chance to brag about your accomplishments. You're Europe's strongest man, two times Britons. Let's talk about your accomplishments for a few minutes. Brag. You want me to sit here and brag? My, my wife will slap me if I brag too much. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, uh, by the way, she and I are on the same side with the uh, scientific prediction. So we'll yeah, get to that a little later. Uh, hopefully I'm on her good side. That's, that's the overthinking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I, I've had a very successful career in Strongman. I've been very lucky, um, been all over the world. I've won major contests all over the world, broken world records. So I had a time where I would probably have classed myself as, at one time, one of the top five guys, you know, on the planet. Um, I've won Europe's Strongest Man. I've won the Ultimate Strongman World Championships where I beat guys like Eddie Hall and um, Zadrina Saviskas. Wow. Um, I've won countless Giants Live um, shows, uh, Champions League shows, had world records for very brief moments in, in the Axel. Uh, deadlift, Strongman Deadlift, I had a world record in that. Countless British records. Um, I still believe I've got a few records in Farmers Walks and Yoke type events. So I've been very lucky. You know, there's been a lot of ups and downs. A lot of newer fans will just know me for the guy that got injured a lot. But I've, I've actually finished a lot of competitions. I've actually got more international victories than any other British athlete. Wow. Uh, I mean, you're talking about farmers and axle deadlift. I think the people who are paying attention know you more for grip strength. Sure. Grip and speed, I guess, uh, to, and, and leg strength. At one time, my, my squatting was kind of, you know, very, very good. Um, my speed on moving events like farmers and yoke is, has been, you know, uh, I, I would have said at one time I was the best in the world, uh, particularly the yoke. I, I really felt if you look back on performances, I think I went about 20 contests in a row where I won the yoke. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> um, I've beaten absolutely everyone. Even, you know, I, I'd probably say Kilishkovsky is the best at moving type events. But I've got a better head-to-head -head, um, between the two of us. So Wow, that's amazing. That's, that's I, prob I'm probably the only person on the planet that can say that. And as long as I don't compete against him again, I can hold on to that. <laughs> <laughs> you still got a little bit of healing to do. But yeah, that uh, that makes sense. I So when, when somebody of your caliber mentions an event like that where you're that successful, I always have to ask, um, what are the techniques that go into a good yoke walk? Like, how, how have you become good at it? And I have other strongmen's opinions, but I would like yours. So one of the most important things is the setup, understanding how to, to get your body stable and control the implement. Because if that implement starts moving around, it's going to drain your energy quickly, and, and that will effectively slow you down as you start to kind of lose balance and have to fight to control the implement. Your, your speed will, will slow down. The next thing is the way I train the yoke. I've always trained it to be fast. I haven't trained to lift the most weight. I, I know I'm capable of lifting the weights. Um, you know, you're training in the gym to get stronger on a regular basis. So when I train these moving events, I've always worked to be quicker. I'll t I tend to do two or three runs. I'll always time each run. And my goal is to improve my speed rather than just go heavier. 
so I was teaching myself to, to, to get fast feet and move quickly. Um, but essentially having that stability, having a strong core, strong legs, they're, they're the kind of basics of it. And then it's lots and lots of practice to, to make yourself um, faster, to get better at understanding where to... I don't worry about where to put my hands on the yoke. A lot of people ask me, where do you put your hands? I actually focus on where it's resting on my back and traps first. And then if you think about strongman contest, they're all different. You know, the yokes that we use in competitions are all different. So my hand position will change depending on the width of, of the implement that we're using. But what I'm trying to do is get the feel of the bar across my back. I, I, I retract my shoulder blades, get as much surface area as possible, um, and then I'll place my hands. And I actually... I actually push forward slightly. I'm, I'm retracting my back, so I'm pulling in my back, but I'm pushing with my hands at the same time. And I try and make sure, if I can try to show you here with mm -hmm. my hand, I don't allow my hand to loosen up and come kind of around the yoke like this. I keep everything in nice and tight, so my back is always pulled tight. And that helps with the stability. Um, and then it's just speed, you know, just practice going fast. These events aren't about maximum weight. They're about how quickly you can do things. And one of the biggest mistakes I see newbies doing is trying to go for the 800, 900, 1000 pound yokes and taking a few steps and moving slowly. That's never going to be a pro. You need to be quick. You need to be fast. Um, and that's probably the biggest mistake I see a lot of people doing is just trying to lift too heavy and getting broken. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned the hand position not being the primary concern because the Stoltman seem to tr uh, to train that way. They have this giant, frankly beautiful wooden yoke that they're that they're training with, and it's such a large diameter that they I think they purposely train with it because they can't get their hands around it because they don't want that to be the priority. Yeah, you need that stability across your back. You know, then then the hands will change. I've done so many different yokes where I've had to figure out where my hands go on the day of the competition. So there's no point in getting too used. The other thing I did when I was, you know, starting off, I went and trained with loads of different people on lots of different kit. So I got used to adapting pretty well. And that's that's a real strength in strongman these days. I think too many guys are so obsessed with how high things are, how wide things are. They ask too many questions. They want to know the exact details of everything. You get JF Karan, he doesn't ask those questions. You know, he turns up to a comp and he'll, he'll be able to adapt. And I, and I could do the same. I never really cared how high some stone platforms would be or, you know, the width of a log or how wide the handles were. Those were questions I just never asked. I got used to training on lots of different equipment and I was always able to adapt things pretty quickly. It's so funny that you say that because I interviewed JF and he spoke exactly in that way. We talked about deadlift and I said, you know, at the time we didn't know the events yet. And I said, I don't know if it's going to be a nine inch, a 13, a 15. And he, his answer was, whoever is the most powerful deadlifter will win. <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I've, I've got some guys that, I mean, I train a lot of athletes now. And one of them, just as an example, has a car deadlift coming up in a competition. And he's like, should I be going somewhere and training a car deadlift? I'm like, no, just squat and deadlift. You get good at squatting and deadlift, you'll be fine on a car deadlift. It's, it's Sometimes people overthink things and try and analyze too much. And, you know, if you're strong, you're strong. And then you can adapt to, particularly, I really think if you're on the way up, just focus on getting stronger and better. Don't worry about making it too specific. If you're at world's strongest man and you're trying to win the title, sure, get the equipment and as, as kind of like you know, copy to as close a detail as you can. But while you're on the way up, you just want to focus on improving. Uh, and sometimes you, you try and make two, things too specific. You actually stop focusing on just your general improvement. Yeah, I mean, so feel free to dismiss the next question along that vein. But do you have a preference on crossbar height for yoke? Like, do you like a lot of clearance underneath the yoke or not much? Yes, I personally like a good amount of clearance, particularly if the contest is outdoors where or on grass or something like that where the surface might not be perfectly flat because i like clearance so that if something does go wrong if you do stumble you're not going to dive into the grass or knock the floor i like to have that height that means i can kind of just focus on moving quickly okay uh, it, indoors it's a little bit easier because you can it's perfectly flat conditions that you're going to be in but yeah put particularly outside i'll go for a higher clearance that then requires having stronger legs for the initial lift and confidence in that but it, it's something that i've worked hard at and you know is a strength of mine obviously yeah fantastic so my last question about yoke technique since like i said i have you here so i want to learn as much as i can um do you have a specific thing you do with breathing so some strong men strong women will hold their breath and get through it as fast as they can if the distance isn't too much do you have a technique like that 
I do like a shallow breath. So I almost kind of breathe fast, but a short kind of fast breath. And it, it, it's kind of weird. But what I'm trying to do is give myself a rhythm to make my feet move faster. So I'm there okay. and it's like, <laughs> it's kind of like a short, fast breath just to focus on foot speed. It's a bit like a sprinter where they're trying to make their arms move fast so that their legs kind of copy. It's the same kind of thing in my head when I'm when I'm breathing. But I'm not taking in deep breath or, or exhaling too much. It's it's all essentially you're holding that breath for for me, the yoke, I want it done in 10 seconds. If I'm taking longer than that, it's a brutal event. Um, you know, and it contests for me. If I'm taking longer than 10 seconds, it's it's slow. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Rob Kearney uses a technique like that, who I consider one of the best yoke uh, walkers sure. in the world. I saw him training with Martins in, in a video, and Martins is good at everything, but Rob just was on another level. I, yeah. I watched him, and I said, if I wanted somebody to teach me yoke, it would be Rob Kearney. Yeah, you, you know, Rob. Rob's excellent at the yoke, uh, and someone that's had to work hard to be good at it as well. So definitely worth, you know, picking his brains for sure. Yeah. So let's kind of rewind a little bit. How did you first get into Strongman? I think this is a really uh, interesting story we'd like to hear. I was just a massive fan of Strongman from a very early age. I used to, I kind of vividly remember watching O.D. Wilson pulling a truck and thinking that was just so cool. I was just a little kid at the time. Um, and then I probably got more into Strongman in my kind of teens. I was watching a lot of uh, Magnus Samuelson, Mag uh, Magnus Ver Magnusson, Sven Carlson, those kind of guys I was watching on TV. And eventually I was watching Britain's Strongest Man in 2004. And I just decided I want to join the gym and try this stuff. I I'd never been in a gym before. Uh, I'd done a lot of sport. I was a very sporty kid. I was, you know, high level rugby player. Um, I used to be British champion at Kung Fu. I was a good athlete. So I was always very sporty, but I'd never really been in a gym. And I just, you know, I said to my dad, I want to do strongman. He was like, okay, we'll find you a gym. I found a gym. It was, so I watched the Britain's Strongest Man and then World's Strongest Man, always shown at Christmas in the UK. Mm -hmm. 2004 Christmas, I watched World's Strongest Man. I joined the gym 2005, January, and just found – I looked for a competition online. It was really hard back then. Strongman wasn't like imagine. it is now. And I just managed to find one competition – and I entered it. I'd never touched any equipment. I'd been training in the gym for five months. Didn't have a clue how I'd do. I remember turning up to this competition, getting out the car, and turning to my partner at the time saying, sod this, let's go home. These, these guys were huge, you know, way bigger than I was. And, you know, they, they all seemed to be quite clicky. They knew each other. I was just some, you know, strange little, well, not little, but strange new guy that no one wanted to talk to. Um, and I, I sort of I stayed there. I started the first event, and I actually did really well. Um, having never touched any of the kit, I ended up coming eighth out of 38 guys. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> wow. And I think, you know, it, I, I, it was the first time I'd ever pushed myself. I smashed my PBs in, in basically every event. I mean, the kit I'd never touched, but like a deadlift. I think the deadlift was 220 kilos. So what's that? It's 400... 80 pounds, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and my PB at the time was a 500 pound deadlift. Or okay. It was the most I'd ever done. And with this 480, I did 13 reps. So Whoa. I was obviously <laughs> not pushing myself in, in the gym. I uh, realized I was a bit stronger than I thought, did well. And then I was just hooked. I was like, all right, I really want to do this. Dedicated myself to it, found a good gym. Um, my second competition was an open competition and I came second to uh, one of the a really good youngster at, at the time in the uk and then that qualified me for midland strongest man and then I, I went from midland strongest man i qualified to compete in britain's strongest man um and basically i went from complete beginner 2005 to being at my first world in 2008 wow that's such a short time period yeah um it's harder to do now the standard's so much higher but I, I was exceptionally good at certain things. There was my, my lower back, my leg strength, and my ability to move with weights was very good. I was extremely weak in pressing movements um, and certain other events. That, that took a lot longer to get good at. But right from the start, I could move pretty well. I could hold my own in grip events. And just, I think, from my days of playing rugby and, and things like that, I could move and I had strong legs. 
Yeah, it's, you said so many interesting thing, things there. So number one, uh, Gabriel Pena also has a background in rugby, so maybe this is a pattern that leads to a good, successful strongman. A lot of the British guys, so Adam Bishop, Terry Hollands, you know, we all come from from rugby backgrounds. It, certainly, it's a bit like American football in, in the States, so it, you're going to be big, strong guys if, if you're playing those type of sports. Yeah, I mean, I think let's let's compare and contrast a little bit. So I did, they had an intramural rugby team in high school that I tried out, and it's it's... I would say more violent and uh, cardiovascular demanding than American football is. It doesn't stop uh, nearly as often. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's I would it's say it's for sure. for sure more violent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're they're both tough sports. I mean, with American football, you can hit so much harder because you've got the the padding and stuff. Padding. But yeah, it's um, they're they're both tough sports, and you're going to get freaky athletes coming out of both. Yeah. The other thing you mentioned that piqued my interest was uh, Odie Wilson. Did he get robbed in that World's Strongest Man? Should he be a one-time winner? I 100% believe so. 1990 World's Strongest Man, in my eyes, is Odie Wilson. As I good agree. as Jean-Paul was, and I love Jean-Paul Sigmundson. I really do think he was an amazing strongman, an amazing character. But 1990 belonged to Odie. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so... I was just thinking about kind of your background, your roots, your upbringing. Is there anything about your upbringing that you think people might not know that they might find interesting? Oh, <laughs> there's probably <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> um, <coughs> I've got an interesting background. I won't go too too in in depth into it right now, but yeah, my, my father was was from Iran, and okay. um, though his he kind of. I guess he toughened me up. He made me very competitive. Um, some ways he was brilliant because he made me determined to, to to be the best I could be. In other ways, he was quite bad and negative. It kind of made me feel I was never good enough as well. Okay. So there, there's kind of like a, a mixed feelings when it comes to my father. My mum, absolutely adore. She's someone that's kind of been through hell, to be honest, and done everything she can for, for her boys. But um, I don't have a... I, I, I didn't have a great relationship with my dad towards the end. He's actually passed away now, but okay. there's just certain things that you can't forgive. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's, it, it's certainly probably things that I need to deal with. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but, you know, yeah. he, he did make me tough and, and me mentally very strong um, in terms of wanting to, to win and, and, you know, be competitive. It, it, <laughs> I remember as a kid, you know, playing games, me and my brother and my dad, my dad would cheat to beat us. It was <laughs> literally, <laughs> you know, you, you had to really, I was always trying to get his approval and prove that I was good enough, but um, I never felt like I was. And that, that was, it's always been pretty tough and it stuck with me. Yeah, I could imagine. Speaking of your brother, this, this is going to sound really stupid, but I was going through your Instagram and I saw a picture of you uh, clean shaven. And I said, wow, he looks like his brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my brother My brother was a strong man as well for a short time. Oh, really? He, um, he, he was very good. Like, a, 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 I guess middleweight in the States is under 105s, isn't it? 105s, yep. Yeah, he, so he, he would have competed in that class. And he, he was good, but he just never really had the bug like I did. Um, he kind of lost interest quite early on. I mean, he did a few contests as an 18-year-old. Okay. He won a few as well, but um, he just lost interest. Yeah, he's a successful coach now, right? Yeah, very much so. He, he, he's doing well. That's great. That's great. Yeah, middleweights uh, in this country uh, come to mind. Nick Camby, which you're familiar with Clash on the Coast. He, sure. he did incredible things there. Oh, the middleweights now are just nuts. I mean, you know, some of the, some of the numbers that those guys lift are, are insane. Yeah, I think he put up 417. I forgot who was it. Uh, I think Travis Ortmeier told me he was taking uh, tips from him, and, and he's yeah. much, much heavier. That's that's way better than most pro strongmen do. Ugh. Yeah. It's unbelievable. He's an incredible showman, too. I'm, I'm mm. sure that you saw how he uh, kind of spun oh, around yeah. with it. and <laughs> you know, The Jesse Marunde type um, yes. celebrations. <laughs> yeah. Speak, speaking of that, who was your favorite guy to watch growing up? Uh, my favorite guy to watch while I was kind of younger was Magnus Samuelson. He he was my kind of, you know, he was my guy that I wanted to win every year and, you know, who I got behind. Um, once I got into the sport, uh, you know, the, the respect, for, I think Zadrunas is probably the person I've looked up to the most. Um, and I still regard him as the greatest of all time. But when you become a competitor, you have to separate that kind of, you know, fan and it, you, you just become, you know, these are your peers and, and your competitors. So uh, my my mental kind of, I, I think now going back to sort of 
you know, I, I retired. I, I know I'm coming back for a show, but but now I enjoy it more again as a fan. Whereas when I was, you know, fully into competing, it was about my performance. So I didn't care how good someone was. You know, you, you can't put someone on a pedestal because you've got to try and beat them. So it was always, you know, I, I'm, I'm there to do the job. But before competing, Magnus Samuelson, for sure, was the, the guy I looked up to. It's funny you say that because uh, me too. <laughs> that's that's really? the guy I, I, yes, I enjoyed Magnus Samuelson the most. I don't know if it was the crossover from the arm wrestling or what it was that was so interesting about him, but I wanted him to always win as well. And then yeah. uh, later on, Pujanowski, of course, and, and, and so forth. But yeah, Magnus Samuelson is, is my favorite as well. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's funny that you say that about kind of going to do the job. I feel like you have that singular focus more than some of the other guys like it's just uh you've placed that at top importance um focus on doing the best i can based on the preparation i've done as opposed to what the other guy is doing is that taken a lot of practice over the years to kind of get that mindset yeah i, I remember one of my, i guess my first world strongest man contest i was um head to head in a loading event against marius pujanowski mm -hmm. and obviously at the time marius was like the man at the time you know he he was incredible and you know on those athletic kind of loading events he was unbelievable and i remember just saying to myself because i stood there with marius and i think it was Harold haugen and you're in these lanes i was like saying to myself don't watch them focus on your lane and the, ever since i kind of did that I, I i've performed so much better i think it's so easy to just go to a competition and think oh crap i'm against such and such whereas i managed to kind of get myself into this bubble of right who cares who's next to me on that lane? Who cares next to me on that lane? Focus on your implements on here and do the job. And I actually ended up in a photo finish with Marius on this loading wow. event, which was my first world's strongest man. To, they, they gave him the win, but I still can't see. You know, you go back and watch it. You, you're talking split seconds. I, I really pushed him. So it's ever since then, I was like, well, if I can do that against the best in the world in my first competition, if I stay focused and just focus on my progress, because – one of the things with, with like Instagram and stuff like that now, you watch everyone and they're all amazing, you know, and it yep. would be easy to think you're rubbish. Uh, and the amount of times I've gone to competitions and you'll look on, I mean, back then it was forums. We didn't have Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that, but you had these strength forums and people would post up their training sessions or their videos. And I, the amount of times I went to competitions thinking, well, if this guy is lifting that, he's going to destroy me. And I would beat them in the competition. And I, I started to realize, well, it doesn't matter what people are doing in the gym. The only thing that matters is what they do on the day of the competition. So having that kind of blinkered vision to what everyone else does and just focusing on myself has really helped me as an athlete because I've never cared what someone says they're doing or, or is it even, you know, is actually doing. It's very easy for people to over to, to peak early and leave their best lifts in the gym. I, I became good at leaving my best lifts in competition. Um, and that helped me, you know, beat some tremendous guys yeah speaking of that so i'm going to abandon my questions and go with some good segues because you're giving me some good ones um speaking of peaking do you think uh aethor melstead peaked too early to do iceland strongest man or has he not peaked yet and he'll be okay for worlds i think i think for um aethor iceland strongest man is more important i don't think he's going to world strongest man as a contender to win Okay, And I think for him, having the title of Iceland's Strongest Man currently is a bigger deal for him. He, he, if he's got Iceland's Strongest Man, he's going to get sponsorship deals. It's your national title. That for him is more important. World's Strongest Man is a bonus. So now he can sort of just focus on deloading. As long as he's not injured, he can come into the competition. Should be fairly fresh. You know, what's he got? Two weeks to recover. Um, he should be absolutely fine. But the big thing for him was winning Iceland's. He's not going to win World's Strongest Man. He might go there saying he is, but it's going to take a miracle for, for that to happen. And that's not to say, you know, he's improved a lot. He impressed me in Bahrain last year. I think he's improving all the time, but he's not going to win World's Strongest Man, whereas winning your national title is a lot more important for a lot of these guys. So I think it was probably more important that he peaked for that than for Worlds. I mean, everybody has to go in believing they're going to win or else they're not going to perform their best. You say that, you know, everyone, not everyone going to Worlds believes they're going to win. I, okay. I certainly didn't believe the first time I went to Worlds that I was going to win. There was a point where I started to believe I can win this and I was going to win, but it wasn't my first Worlds. Okay. You know, it wasn't even my second Worlds. Probably by the, the third one that I was like, okay, 
I've competed against all these guys in the world. I've beaten many of these guys before. I'm getting better and better now, I believe. And you, you do need to build that confidence. I mean, people can fake it. There's, you know, people will say, I'm going to be world's strongest man. Like someone like um, Evan Singleton. I believe him when he says he's going to be world's strongest man. But it wasn't going to happen the first time he went to world's strongest man. Right. You know, he, he's got to improve and keep getting better. And for a lot of the guys, they're looking for that experience. They're looking to close the gap. They're, they're looking to right. First thing you want to do when you go to Worlds, your goal is to make the final. Then when you start making the final, you say, well, I belong here now. Then you start kind of changing that attitude. And it's like, right, I'm aiming for top five. I'm aiming for top three. I'm aiming to win. It's, you know, we've seen that with um, JF Caron. Mm -hmm. Just steadily getting better and better all the time. Um, even Zadrunas to a degree. You know, Zadrunas didn't start off the best. He just got better and better and better and ended up, you know, you get to that point where you do have that confidence in yourself and you believe you're going to win. I'd say there's probably five men that believe they're going to win World's Strongest Man this year. Okay, that's very then interesting. Then there's guys that believe they can make the final. There's guys that believe they can make the podium. The, you know, that's where it all changes. I don't believe 25 guys going all believe that they can win. They might say it to, you know, because they feel that's what they've got to do, but it's, it's, it's just not the truth. You know, it's, it's not like, even like in a boxing match, it's one-on-one. -on -one. You could get a lucky punch. A lucky punch won't help you in a strongman competition. Right. You could get a lucky performance on an event, but then there's still, you know, however many events. So the, the odds become less and less that you can just go in and, and rely on luck. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you've mentioned Big Z a few times. That um, prompts me to have to ask you, 99% of people would call him the best of all time. Who's next? For me, Brian Shaw. Okay. And Brian, if he goes and wins this year, he could potentially, you know, even now people could argue that Brian's the best. But for me, it's still Zadrinus. But if Brian can win a fifth, he certainly throws himself into that mix. I feel the same. I feel Brian's second, even with fewer wins than uh, than Marius. I think Brian's already past Marius, and he is number two. Um, the, 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 reason, the reason I put Brian and Zadrunas ahead of Marius is because there is more to strongman than the world's strongest man contest. Mm -hmm. We have some major contests that go on throughout the world, um, through the year, and Brian and Zadrunas have won everything. Right, Marius, Marius for me, 2003 particularly, was the best strong man on the planet. But 2004, Zadrunas and a guy called Vasil Verastiuk started beating him quite regularly. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously there was a split where a lot of the top the guys went split. to Yeah. Um, and Marius, no kind of, you know, it's not his own fault, but he beat some easier guys to win World's Strongest Man. So two, I'd say two of his titles were against much easier opposition. Um, that's not his fault. <laughs> He's still... Right. And he is still one of the greatest of all time, for sure. You know, an incredible athlete, incredibly determined athlete. But for someone like myself that's been involved in the sport for so long, has competed against Zadrunas, Brian, and Marius. I've competed against all three of them. I, I have to put those two ahead of him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I feel like no one can pass Big Z. He's just won too many Arnolds and too many other things and held too many records. I think he will forever be uh, the best, especially because it took him a while to get started and he just racked up so much in, you know, in that his, period of time. His career is truly amazing. I mean, when you look at the records that he's got and you go on Wikipedia and look at his list of achievements, it's, you know, you're reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's very, very impressive. I, th I think Liz was mentioning it, right? Like on his Wikipedia, it's, you have to scroll and scroll and scroll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, I do indeed watch all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Good man. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, kind of another childhood type question. Did you have a hero growing up and has that changed now? Do I have a hero? I don't know that I've ever had like a hero. There's people that I looked up to. Um, my grandfather I looked up to very much so. Um, I was always, um, I was just, Typical kind of, you know, probably man of my age involved in lifting, but Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, two guys in terms of like their movies and stuff that, that just inspired me for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be a big fan of wrestling. So I used to, you know, the wrestlers, but uh, that that's probably it really. It's, you know, there's, there's no one that stands out that I think, oh, you know, this was someone that I, I'd say I looked up to, if you like, there's just been lots of people that have influenced me and, you know, certainly motivated me to push myself in my own path.
Yeah. I mean, fair enough. Steve Schmidt said his hero are the Marvel characters. So <laughs> Yeah, well, I like the Marvel characters too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have a, a moment during your childhood where kind of you were um, you know, playing in the yard or whatnot and lifting something weird where you look back on it today and you say, Oh, it all makes sense now. Yeah, I was um I remember vividly going for a walk with my, my father in some hills and we'd been watching Str World's Strongest Man on TV. We're walking along and we just happened to find this area of stones that had numbers written on them, like the, they would do at World's Strongest Man with the stones to lift overhead. Yeah. It was random as hell. Uh, <laughs> just to think, you know, we'd just gone to this you know, for this walk and we found these stones. And weirdly, years later, I met a friend of mine who I'm actually training with tomorrow, believe it or not, um, who became one of my first coaches. He put those stones there. He, he's a oh. he's a, actually a professional stunt man, a guy called Nick McKinless, and he did middleweight strongman for a while. Mm -hmm. He's very very good arm wrestler, very good at grip um, type exercises, and he was a decent strongman as well. Great athlete. I mean, a professional stunt man does some crazy stuff, and they were his stones that I found. But I didn't meet him <laughs> until about fifteen years later. So it was kind of <laughs> such a, a weird thing to talk about and, and discover that these stones actually belong to him. <laughs> wow remind that was, you know i remember watching strongman and then trying to lift these stones and that was me hooked with with the strength world for sure reminds me of a time travel movie that's a very interesting story <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was doing the same thing the other day walking through some trails and i see some logs oh let's try to lift that log overhead and, and see what happens <laughs> it's just the manly thing to do isn't it of course of course <laughs> sort of test yourself <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So of all your years of competing, who's been your favorite person to compete against for whatever reason, whether they push you or you just enjoy their personality? Um, who's, who's that person? Oh, uh, there's been loads of guys that, um, you know, I've made some brilliant friends through Strongman. There's a guy called Irvin Katona. I used to love competing with him. We did a lot of shows in the Champions League together. He's such a, a character. His laugh was incredible. <laughs> he had this... <laughs> A, like booming laugh he just always kind of you know let it out um jeff Caron, another guy just just a really cool guy obviously a lot of the british guys have become very good friends of mine um but there's there's so many guys that i've met over the years that we've had tough competitions we've had battles but afterwards you become great friends as well so it's been nice i mean i think strongman in that respect is really good most of the guys get on very very well yeah, I've noticed that as well. Um, everybody that I've interviewed, and even from a fan's perspective, I think strongman is much more welcoming than almost any other sport. It's uh, yeah. very refreshing. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and and JF also, like, you talk to him for a minute, and it's like he's your best friend. Like, he's such a nice guy. It's, it's JF also, have you ever spoken to Krzysztof Radzikowski? I have not. He, he's just brilliant. He's such the a same. funny, laid-back character. He's really cool, yeah. All right, I'll reach out for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of on the flip side, who's the uh, competitor you've wanted to compete against and never had the chance? Ooh. Um, it would have been cool to compete against someone like Kaz. You know, Kaz is <laughs> obviously one of the most intense, crazy guys you've ever met. Also, um, Vasil Verastiuk. Mm -hmm. Again, he, he, Vasil was the guy I looked up to after Ma um, Magnus Samuelson. Okay. Uh, just before he, he was kind of obviously 2004 world's strongest man. He was still involved when I was just getting into the sport, but I never got the chance to compete with him. Um, but yeah, he, he was just a beast. That guy would really impress me. Yeah. If you were to equilibrate for today's training methods and knowledge and all that, where do you put Kaz all time? Is he top five? For sure. Kaz is in the top five. Uh, I would say, maybe fourth fourth full time yeah i would agree he was an maybe, animal. maybe even I, I might even put him above um marius i might even put him at third i, think I might too <laughs> just because there's the you know he was banned for a few years he definitely could have had a couple more titles um he was doing some crazy numbers way before you know there was the ability to train on the events like there is now um and he just didn't have anyone else to push him to to greater numbers and that's you know, once you once you get into that you know elite level where you're the number one, what motivates you then to push harder? It's right. You know, he 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 was seriously an impressive animal. Yeah, wasn't he the first to not that bench press is a uh, strong man event, but wasn't he the first to bench press three hundred kilos? I believe so. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that there is a little bit of kind of controversy with that with um another lifter, but I think officially, if you look on Wikipedia, it's given to Kaz. So we'll, okay, yeah, Kaz is the strong man. We'll give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And as we wind down today, I kind of I want to talk about your upcoming competition, the Strongman Classic, and uh, what are the events there? Which are the ones you think suit you the best? Uh, you're excited about it. Let's talk about that a little bit. I'm really excited about it. You know, the opportunity came. Uh, it's uh, a Giants Live, the Giants Live Classic, and it's at the Royal Albert Hall, which for British people is like competing, you know, in Madison Square Garden. Okay. It's a it's a very iconic venue where if you're a performer, that's where you want to be. You know, it's it's such a it really is an iconic venue. So for me to get the opportunity to compete there, I really couldn't say no. I didn't like the way I went out with World's Strongest Man, obviously. Mm-hmm. Torn Achilles, not exactly how I wanted to go, stretch it off. Um, I'm not the strong man that I used to be. You know, in my prime, I, I'm not as good as I used to be. My, my goal is to get somewhere close to 90% of my best. Okay. And I sometimes get frustrated in the gym at the moment because things aren't coming back as quickly as I'd like. And, you know, certain things are going well. I, I'm My grip's feeling pretty strong. I, I feel on certain things there's improvements. But I have to remind myself, it's been two years of not competing and overcoming certain injuries. I, my my ankle doesn't work in the same way that it used to. Okay. There is still a big lack of power from the left to the right foot. So there's certain things where that's frustrating me. Um, I look back at you know what I used to be able to do, and you should never do that, but... No. <laughs> We all do it as athletes, and, and it sometimes frustrates me. But I still have about seven weeks, and each week I'm seeing improvements. So my, my goal is to go there and enjoy it. That's got to be number one. I'm not saying this is going to be my last comp ever. I'm going to use it and see how I enjoy it, see if I feel like I am capable of competing at a high level again. If I don't think I am, then it will be my last show. If I feel... I've enjoyed it, and I feel like if I keep going, I can get a bit better again, and maybe maybe even get close to my best. Then I may do another one day show. I've lost the interest to go to World Strongest Man. That's you know, even if I qualified for World Strongest Man, I, I won't go. It's mm-hmm. I, I, I've got so much on now with my businesses, my family, and other things that I really cannot commit to that full time drive of trying to win World Strongest Man. But a competition with five events. Much easier to train for. You know, I can train three or four days a week. It's absolutely fine. Um, and I could still be competitive, as people are bored of now hearing me say it, with the right set of events. So, um, <laughs> no, Nobody is ever bored of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can hold my own on the frame carry, on the Hercules hold. My axle in my prime was very good. If I can get 180, 400 pounds, I'd be happy with that. You know, in my prime, I was o- over 200 kilos. Uh, like uh, 450 was my best on the axle. Um, um, right now, I'm miles from that. I'm, I struggled with 330 the other day. Okay. Uh, so if I can get to 400, I'd be very pleased. If I can finish the stones, I'd be pleased. On the deadlift, it's, I believe it's four and, uh, sorry 350 kilos for reps. Okay. So it's on an axle, which is much harder than a deadlift bar. Yeah. Um, again, Four or five reps on that, I'd be very pleased. It's not going to win, but I'll be able to hold my own, hold my head up high, perform in front of a a really big, you know, amazing live crowd um, in such an iconic venue. If I can enjoy that, then I'm going to be very happy, man. It seems like a a much better story than the previous one. You get to uh, kind of control everything on your own terms and and have some fun. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I I'd love to be that. You know, be at my best and thinking, right, I can go there and really challenge is it's being realistic you know i think i need six months to get back to even close to my best if my body allowed it and i just don't have that that time so Mm -hmm. and the problem is you try and rush it and then you can get injured again and you can get hurt so it's i'm having to hold myself back to to make sure i look after my body um so it's just trying to get that balance right and it's very difficult because people will sit there go i'll just push yourself well if i just push myself i'll get hurt again so (laughs) you know You've got to kind of, I've got to remember, I can't base my lifts in my training off my best of all time because I'm not at that strength level. My body weight's down 
almost well I'm, I'm 15 kilos lighter than i was last time i competed at world strongest man mm -hmm. uh, so about 35 pounds you know lighter mm -hmm. um I, I, and i'm just not pushing my body like it, i could in my you know late 20s early 30s it, it's it's taking its toll so yeah. i'm having to use my experience and, and you know push when i can hold back when i need to um but there's certain events you know my grip feels phenomenal um if I can get in anywhere near close to my best on the frame carry, I can score big points on that. And then if I can pick off a few points on the axle and the deadlift and put in a good performance on the stones, I'm going to walk away with a decent performance and be very happy. How many guys are you competing against? I think there's 12 of us competing. Okay, great. Awesome. As, long as, as long as everything's okay with travel and, and getting people right. on, it's been a big issue this year, but we'll keep our fingers crossed that it all goes ahead. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. So that's really exciting. Hopefully after you're done competing there, we get back together again and talk about how it went. What do you think of that? That'll be great. I'll, I'll Fantastic. Look forward to it. Fantastic. So as we wrap up, uh, do you have anything you'd like to promote? I know you have multiple businesses, uh, any sponsors, anything like that? Just, that um, like just go and follow myself and Auntie Liz on Instagram and um, check out our, our YouTube page, Big Laws Official. It's, I mean, I think um, my strongest, my, my block strongest man is, is close but I feel we are the page to come to for strongman news and interviews. <laughs> you, are the, you are the premier page, and anybody who doesn't know that is just not paying attention. <laughs> Thank you again, Uncle Laz, for jumping on my channel. This was an extreme pleasure. I learned a lot, learned about your intuitions, your experience, vast experience about the sport, and uh, just kind of how to look uh, at things through a different prism and uh, really thoroughly enjoyed myself. So thanks again for jumping on. I've enjoyed it too. All the best. Take care, guys. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.